I'm a little late to this. A little too late, in fact. Literally almost a month late. But I promise, I saw this movie the day it came out. Uh, and that was the start of my spring break, and I thought, hey, I've been busting my ass at school, I'll just do it when I get back. And I got back from spring break, and I'm busting my ass again. So, yeah. Uh, this won't be a long video, and it won't have spoilers, uh, but if you have not seen this movie, go see it. That is my short review if you're not staying, because seriously, don't get this movie spoiled for you. Okay, let's get into it. And leave a like. Don't forget to do that, or I'll knock my teeth out and dress up like Jared Leto's Joker, and we all don't want that whatsoever. To keep it simple, I thought that Batman was basically exactly what I wanted from this movie. You can tell from the craft of this movie that every decision has a purpose and was developed and thought out thoroughly. To be honest, as well done as realistic Batman has been done, I'm a little over it. It is very difficult to talk about this movie and not mention the Nolan trilogy, which is a set of movies that I love deeply and have some of the best on-screen Batman shit of all time. But I'm a little over realistic Batman. I want noir, gothic horror, more spandex, silly comic book stuff. Uh, this movie has every single one of that except spandex, and you know what? I'll take it, especially the silly comic book stuff. And I mean that in the good and respectful way. See, comic books are really goofy, no matter how serious they try to be. And this movie has a serious, dark tone, but it still has goofy and very naturally funny moments. I love my Marvel movies, but the humor felt natural in this movie and not as forced as Marvel has tried to be in the past. Robert Pattinson is a fantastic Batman. He gives a stellar performance, and I love that this is solely a Batman-centered movie as well. Batman movies usually focus on the villains, but this time we are only seeing it through the eyes of Batman. And what makes it even better is that Batman goes through an actual character arc in this movie, which is absolutely amazing, and this doesn't happen much in Batman movies, and I absolutely adored that. Paul Dano's Riddler is menacing and terrifying, and his performance alone is enough to make me want to go back and watch this movie. I love his new design too. It's very scary and very Zodiac-like, and I thought that was such a cool inspiration for the character. His plan's really cool up until the very end, and I still liked it, but I was hoping for something a little different personally, but it does leave for interesting places to go for the sequel. Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman is the best Catwoman we have ever gotten. She does a stellar job as the character that I particularly don't love. I just find Selena Kyle a little annoying and how everything is extremely sexual in most comics and movies dealing with her, but I completely bought her in this movie. I'm sure we'll see more of her in future movies, and I'm looking forward to it. Commissioner Gordon is great. He definitely rivals Gary Oldman as best Commissioner Gordon, even though I really do love the one from Harley Quinn the Animated Series. Great show, by the way. If you have not watched it, please find the time to do so. It's fantastic. I cannot talk about this movie without mentioning Colin Farrell as the Penguin because wow, completely unrecognizable. And I mean that in a great way. He is absolutely genius. I loved his Penguin. Very funny. And I just want to see more of that character. Speaking of characters, Gotham is its own character and it's probably my favorite Gotham that we've gotten so far in live action. You really feel the sense then that there needs to be a Batman. Also, the cinematography is just some of the best. It's the same cinematographer from Dune and the Mandalorian, and the movie visually is just so beautiful to look at. And they use projections for the rooftop scenes, which is a very old film technique, and it just looks so good. I want a projector for my short films anyways, but watching this movie just makes me want that so much more, because it looks so good. The f music though. <laughs> Michael Giacchino has truly made some beautiful work with this music. My only gripe is that I wish the Riddler's theme was a bit more iconic, because it's just Ave Maria in a minor key, which has a point in the movie and is very cool, but I don't really catch myself singing it like the other themes in this movie. I have very small critiques of this movie that I assume will be different in the following sequels. One is that I wish we saw more of Bruce Wayne, like the fake Bruce Wayne we would have seen in other Batman properties, specifically Christian Bale's fake Bruce Wayne. Another is more of Alfred. What we got was great, and I think Andy Serkis is an absolute legend of the game, and I love seeing him on the screen together and them working together but that's the one thing the Nolan trilogy does have over is Bruce's and Alfred's relationship and that trilogy uh, is just so much better than this movie and again I know we're only in the first movie but I wish we just saw more of that and I have a little nitpick that's extremely insignificant this does not take anything away from the movie uh, and I just hope we get to see this one day but I really want to see Batman with white eyes. Batman with white eyes is perfect to me. Nolan tried this, and it was okay, but I think white contact lenses would fit in this world, and I think that'd be sick as shit. They have a center point about contact lenses in this movie, but obviously they weren't white for obvious reasons if you have seen the movie, but that's just a minor one. Oh, one little thing. There is one scene in this movie that kind of felt like it was shoehorned in by the studio, 
kind of felt a little out of place. Uh, if you have seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the only scene that kind of took me out of it. And again, I did like the performances and what was going on in that scene, but it was just like, eh, we did not really need that, but it was interesting to see for it to build this world. I'm going to do a separate video diving in what I want from this universe later, but overall the movie is nearly perfect for me. Batman is a very important figure in my life, and the best thing they nailed is that Batman does not kill. Finally, it felt so nice to finally watch a movie where Batman does not kill. Easy answer, this is a 9 out of 10. I was thinking of a 9.5, but I haven't had the chance to watch the movie again because I really want to, and I've just been crammed with school, a wedding, so yeah, I've just been a little busy. There's one bitch about this. It's difficult for me to rank this with the other Batman movies because there are so many, and many of them are so good, and I enjoy a lot of them, except you and you. I kind of wanted to do a big Batman video, uh, but I realized there was no time for it, and hell, I still haven't even finished editing my Matrix sequels video. Uh, anywho guys, I appreciate you guys watching this video as late as it was posted. Please hit the like button and subscribe and share, and I will see you for a machinima test or for the Northman movie review. No, wait. Oh god, no. Well, f**k me.